Welcome back, folks. We're going to continue on now with our little fun 555 project. If you recall last time, this was the higher frequency circuit that we used. And this one here was the low frequency circuit that we used to flash the LED. And what we're going to do at this point is we're just going to combine the two together and make some small alterations. So let me bring that one up here. So here you can see we have the, the low frequency circuit here and we have the high frequency circuit here and now what we want to do in this particular case remember before when we looked at the high frequency circuit we looked at the signal here on um, pin 2 and pin 6 and it was that ramp of the charging and discharging capacitor well what we want to do in this case is we want to get a resistor of about 10,000 ohms and we just connect that up here So we're going to go from here to the resistor and from the resistor we want to come around to here. Let's tidy that up a bit. And we change the value of this 10k. All right then. So now what we have is capacitor voltage here coming over going through this resistor and then coming in and controlling the frequency of the high frequency oscillator here. I've done a couple of other things here too as well. I've uh, made it we'll put jumpers in on this one here so that we can uh, either remove the LED if we want to or attach some off-board device because uh, we are going to make a circuit board out of this and, and have it built for us by the good folks over PCB way. But we put on a power connector here and a connector for the speaker because it, we're going to make a PC board on it. We want to get power into the PC board and we want to get uh, a way to attach our speaker to it. So from here, we just go up here. We say convert to PCB. And this is the result of that process. So basically what it does is it dumps all the component footprints onto a, a plank sheet. And then you have to rearrange it and just attach up uh, the, the rat line. So you put in a trace like this and move your components around the way you want them. So let's see how that actually looks like once we complete it. So here we have the, the completed layout. And the way we'll finish this off is simply by putting in copper pores. The copper pore on the top is going to be connected to VCC. So let's do that. I go ahead and I enter it. I tell it I want connectivity to VCC. And I want the border to be depending on the board. And now it will put in a copper pore that covers the entire surface of top of the board and connects all those uh, VCC points, as you can see here. They're all now fully connected. And now we do the same on the back. Put in a copper pore, connectivity to ground. And now we have a complete ground plane on the back. And that's the board complete. Now all it takes is for you to export your Gerber files. And um, well, now let's pop over to, to PCB Way and order our PC board. Let me show you how that's done. Okay, here we are over at PCB Way. What I'm going to do here is going into the quick order. Okay, so then I can just click on add my Gerber files. So you just choose a file where you've zipped up all your Gerber files and your drill file. Um, and it can be either RAR or, or zip format. Uh, they're open to either one. And you open it up, it loads it up. So here we are. It's, it's decided that we have a two layer board and it's got the dimensions correctly. Now all we have to do is choose our options. You have a lot of different options here. So the paneling for this particular board is just going to be a single pieces. We, we don't have multiple designs on a single board. Um, so that's chosen there for us. It's a two layer board, but if you were to go in and just get a quote and you wanted a quote on a four layer version of the board, you can click on that and it'll change the prices up here accordingly let you know how much the board's going to cost you but we're working with a two-layer board here you can choose your material whether you want fr4 which is a standard fiberglass but you could have an aluminum board a rogers type board copper base boards you can have um, different versions of the the fiberglass if you wish they even have an option to do flexible boards if you wish as well the thickness of the board 1.6 is fine but you could put in a thinner board or a thicker board, depending on what your needs are. And of course, the prices will be updated accordingly. Um, we'll stick to 1.6. 
this is not a very complicated board, so we don't need very, very fine track spacing and track width, but you can have it even wider or you can have much, much narrower. Uh, the narrower you go, of course, the more expensive the process is going to be. Six is pretty standard. Minimum hole size, again, if you require very, very, very small hole sizes, you can select that too. Uh, however, again, you know, that it, it, it changes the process and the prices have changed accordingly. Three millimeters, pretty much the standard. And then uh, what color do you want your board? So you choose a, a solder mask here to make the board whatever color you want. I'm going to go for red. I like red. Um, Silk screen is, yeah, white is fine. Like if, you, if, you, if you're going with a, a, a lighter color like white or yellow, you might want to choose black and it'll automatically do that for you. But we'll stick to the red and the white. We don't have any edge connectors on this, but if you did have edge connectors, you could choose them. Uh, so pretty well when you do it, it, it's clever enough to notice exactly what it is that you want and what would work best for you. Uh, but you can, like I said, you can make little changes here if you want. Uh, such as surface finish. The, the standard is uh, hot air solder leveling with lead-based solder, but you could, you could do lead-free. You could do immersion gold if you want a gold-plated board. Uh, you could do hard gold, too, if you wanted a really thick plating. And, uh, you know, prices change accordingly. Immersion gold is not too expensive, and I've done boards in immersion gold, too, where I wanted something that I don't want the, the board to tarnish. However, HASL doesn't tarnish that much, so... And you can do immersion tin and E and E P I G, or you can have uh, plain copper. Um, via process, you want your your vias tented, plugged, or not covered. What they are tented vias are the solder mask is is put over the hole in the via. Vias not covered or untended vias leaves a little hole and allows you to actually make connections to that via. We don't have any vias in this board here, so there's no sense in choosing that. But it's it's handy. In the past, I've made a lot of boards where I want uh, to put vias into the ground plane pretty close to some signals so that I can do some proper scoping of them and have a very short ground. So it's very handy for doing that. You just pop a via in, make sure that you select vias not covered. Um, but we'll stick with tented vias for this board. Now this is about the weight of the copper or the thickness of the copper on the board. And standard for most boards is one ounce copper. We'll leave it at one ounce for our purposes. When they make your PC boards, they put a little identification number on them, so it makes it easier for them to process the boards. Now, if you don't want that on there, you can choose that too. I'm not worried about having the identification number on there. Now, it's just a matter of choosing your shipping method. I think ePack, it comes pretty quick, so if you want to spend an extra dollar on it there. Uh, DHL is, is ultra fast, three days, but you pay for it, you know, so it's up to you. Um, so... Choose whatever shipping method you want, and then save it to the cart. Then it's just a simple matter of putting in your information and paying for it. And they'll manufacture the board and send it off to you by whatever shipping method you chose. There's no method I know of that's easier than PCB ways. That's why their logo says PCB prototype the easy way. It really is. Right. So let's get down to the lab and we'll wire up what we put into the schematic today and see what kind of a device that gives us. And let's go down and have a little bit of fun. Okay, here we are. Uh, let's, uh, let's start putting this together. So I'm going to put this, um, make this 555 here, the high frequency. And then we'll do, to show it in the schematic, we'll bring a line over, which is already actually put, on, put that in. Comes over here, goes through this 10K resistor down here to pin five and that's going to do the modulation of this to modulate the higher frequency oscillator and it should produce an interesting result so i'm going to get started now and finish off all the wiring up here and uh, we'll come back and slow it down again when we're all done we're all finished wiring it up so well, let's turn it on and see what happens. So basically what we have here is we have the, the uh, capacitor voltage on the first oscillator is now modulating the frequency of the uh, second oscillator through pin five there through that resistor. And we, can, we have a small range of adjustment here. 
speed it up a little bit. Or we could slow it down. It's just a quick shot of what that looks like on the oscilloscope. You can see the frequency changing there. And that's it. So we'll wait for the PC boards to come in from PCB Way, and uh, we'll build one of these up and uh, have some fun with it. And we'll see you then. Thanks for watching.